Perfect. Beth, if you just like to start with a general statement for everybody, um, go ahead. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Kyle, and good morning, everybody. It's certainly my distinct pleasure on behalf of the association to welcome all the media members. Uh, additionally, want to welcome Western Illinois, which is not new to the OVC, but new to the association playing for the first time this upcoming season. And our three new coaches, Gardner Webb's Chris Reisert, uh, Bobby Wilder at Tennessee Tech and Joe Davis, again, not new to the conference, but new to his role at Western Illinois. We're so excited to see your work and to see your teams compete and to welcome you to the football family. Now, certainly as we come to this day, everybody is always so excited for the start of another football season. And I know you're here to hear from our coaches and our student athletes and rightfully so, but we wanted to give you this time to lay the foundation, if you will, for what's going on with the association, because I know there are still some questions. And earlier in the spring, we had an announcement, which was really groundbreaking in Division I athletics. And we wanna make sure you have the details associated with that. In intercollegiate athletics these days, the one thing that is certain is that of change. Uh, there's a great deal of change, some small, such as the use of technology on the bench, which we're complying with and excited to be a part of for this upcoming season, or the discussions relative to name, image, and likeness in the House, Hubbard, and Carter settlements. We have two choices as a group of athletics administrators and leaders shaping intercollegiate athletics. One's to be reactive to the change that's going on around us, or to be proactive. And in the case of the Football Association, we have clearly decided to be proactive, to take the future in our own hands, and to shape a course of which we're really proud. Last year was the first full competing season for the Football Association, and a good season it was. We had great competitive success with co-champions and UT Martin and Gardner-Webb and another team in Eastern Illinois, all three of which were playoff worthy. This past spring, our presidents and chancellors, mindful of the success that we had, got together for an in-person event in Atlanta. They spent two days together and it was really quite an impactful meeting. The presidents and chancellors came to the meeting with the understanding that we had something good going on here, that the first season was just a foretelling of good things to come. They realized there are nice synergies between the schools that are involved. There's a shared vision and mission as to the role of intercollegiate athletics but more distinctly, the role of FCS football and a commitment to FCS football. There was an understanding that there's value in presidential leadership, that there is a commitment to football and to shared success, a desire to build rivalries and to stay regional in our approach to sponsoring sports. So as the presidents and chancellors came together, they decided they wanted to strengthen what we had. We always had more than a scheduling alliance. We had a strong partnership, thanks to Sharika and our friends at the Big South and the commitment of folks in the OVC. It had been a sound partnership, but this was an attempt based on what happened in April and ultimately codified in early June to bring us even together more strongly than before, to quote our tagline. We now are operating as one conference, but with a collaborative nature, so both conferences are involved. It resulted in signatures and commitments by the schools and by the conferences to make sure that this happened and a long-term vision to get us out to at least 2030. We understand the value of numbers. We understand the value of AQ and it's a commitment to one another to make this the most successful pattern that we can. I'm delighted to be a part of this. I think it's the first model of its, of its sort it's within FCS football and it gives us strength for our institutions, for our conferences, which allows us then to grow. And most importantly, to our student athletes that know they're coming to a good and stable home to play FCS football. We have laid the administrative structure for success, but certainly the most important success is what happens on the playing field. And we feel certain given our first year, our second year is gonna be even more impactful. It's hard to believe, but we start 38 days from now with Southeast Missouri playing North Alabama in the FCS kickoff game in Montgomery. The next week, we have three teams playing on August 29th, and then we have another five teams playing on August 31st, so I can't wait for it to get started. Our first association game is UT Martin playing SEMO on September 7th. 
On September 28th, we have our last year co-champs, Gardner Webb and UT Martin playing one another, which should uh, lead to a really exciting competition. And then our season will conclude on November 23rd, right before the announcement of the playoff bracket. And I feel certain given this configuration of schools, we will have multiple teams that are clearly qualified and should be included in the playoff bracket. I'll conclude my comments by saying a sincere thank you. Thank you to our media team for planning today's event. Thank you to our friends from the Big South Conference that have made this, this arrangement so much fun to work on. To the leadership that had the vision to allow it to happen. To our coaches who are such good teachers and educators of our students and use sport to, as the greatest learning lab of life. And to the media for your responsible way in which you cover FCS football. And finally, to our student athletes who have so much faith in us in the bright future that we have. So with that, Kyle, I'll conclude and look forward to hearing from my good friend and colleague, Sharika.